I'm Goldie Hyder of the Business Council of Canada. Welcome to Speaking of Business. The COVID-19 pandemic has in many ways put our lives on pause. But in other ways, the pace of change is accelerating as we learn how to coexist with COVID. In March, within a matter of days, businesses across Canada figured out how to adapt. Here we are months later, we continue to innovate and plan for what comes next. With all of this change, what does Canada's future business landscape look like? Nicola Marcoux is the CEO of PwC Canada. With offices across the country, PwC offers a broad range of professional services to clients to help them solve problems and identify opportunities. Adapting to change is at the forefront of what they do. Welcome to the podcast, Nick. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me, Goldie. Well, look, uh, as I said in the introduction, you're sort of in the, in the mix of things, right? You're in the thick of it. It's not like you're at the hospitals, but you're certainly seeing the surgeries that are taking place inside businesses these days in terms of how to manage this. How do you think this pandemic is going to affect uh, the way businesses operate in the future? Great question. I think, first of all, um, we were on, at PDBC, we were on a digital transformation journey that had started well before covid very happy that we had started well before COVID because we went from having 15% of our people working from remote to 97% overnight. And every CEO I've been speaking to across the country has really made the uh, the statement that they need to transform their business and go on the digital transformation journey even faster. Uh, in our case at PDBC, we've decided to double down on our digital transformation and to accelerate this transformation. A big piece of this is upskilling our people giving them the capabilities they need to thrive in a digital environment. And um, yeah, working from remote, I think, is going to be something that is going to stick. I don't think PwC, we will be going back to 15% of our people working from remote. I think it's going to be, it's not going to be 97% the way it is today, uh, but it'll be some higher number, maybe like 35 or 40% of our people um, who may never come back to the office. What about the jobs? You know, what sectors do you think are going to expand and contract? Because, you know, we're seeing a lot of what you said, that, you know, this crisis is a disruptive force, but it's accelerating things, but it's also creating some gaps in the supply chains. What are you seeing on that front? Obviously, we can expect that um, e-commerce has definitely benefited from this uh, pandemic and it will probably continue to benefit from it. Obviously, the food retailers are doing well, pharmacies, the a video communications company, everything that's around the cloud and last mile delivery, they're all performing extremely well. Um, we have a lot of clients in travel and entertainment and and um, high-end luxury retail and, and restaurants. It's been um, devastating for these sectors uh, with the last two months of uh, how it's impacted their businesses. And now our governments are trying to do things uh, with subsidies. I think if I think of the airline industry, that's probably the one that's been hit the hardest. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess we can question as a side, are we doing enough? I think the long-term uh, effects, as companies go more digital, I think it'll be a better customer experience and um, good for everybody. Now, one of the things that you and I talked about a few weeks ago was a trend that you're seeing in terms of cyber attacks in North America. Talk to our listeners about that. So um, as we are all working from remote, uh, or many of us, the risk profile changes. It's very different when we're working from remote than when we're all working from the different corporate head offices. And we're actually playing on the hackers' uh, home field. Uh, they're used to working from remote. That's that's their core business. And we uh, we monitor cyber attacks across North America, and we've seen a huge uplift uh, in activity. I would say almost like twenty fold from what it was pre COVID. Some of it is not very sophisticated. But some of it is actually quite sophisticated, which is uh, quite scary. So a lot of the CEOs I'm talking to are actually quite concerned about uh, cybersecurity and how they protect their their data and their clients' data. So it's uh, something that we uh, were definitely um, working very closely with many of our uh, big clients uh, to protect them. Yeah, I love the uh, home field of hackers, Lan. I guess those those uh, those mischievous dudes are often dudes I think are always working from home, aren't they? Correct. Well, look, um, the other thing about PwC is that, you know, you're a very strong global brand, and I'm sure you're interacting with your colleagues around the world. What are you learning from them, as particularly those in markets that have come before us? I know you're in China and Italy and Spain and Japan, for example. What are the things that you're learning from them that you think would help Canada and Canadians 
adjust to life with COVID? So um, in the first few weeks of, uh, of the COVID-19 crisis, I, I did reach out to my counterparts in China and, and Italy or, uh, who were a few weeks ahead of us because um, I couldn't find um, the textbook as to how to manage under COVID-19. It was not available in any stores. And uh, I thought the best leading indicator was actually territories that were three or four weeks ahead of us. And you know, the first lesson that I got from them was communicate, communicate, communicate. There was a lot of uncertainty. And we at PDBC, we certainly um, took that uh, that direction of communicating a lot with our employees, with our partners, with our clients, um, our retired partners, so all of our stakeholders. And then another great comment or a piece of advice I got from our Japanese uh, CEO was um, he said, you will see after three, four weeks, you're kind of thinking um, everything is fine. Working from remote, people are actually quite productive and you'll be pleasantly surprised as I was, um, how our business was resilient and how we were being able to deliver for our clients. But he did tell me that after four, five, six weeks of working from remote, uh, you will see a drop in productivity, a drop in morale, and an increase in mental health issues. Mm-hmm. So um, with that in mind, well, we, um, we had an all-people webinar. I think it was after week five and uh, had a psychologist on the line to give us tips on how we can work from remote you know, stay healthy from a mental health perspective and be there for each other. So um, that was definitely a, a good lesson learned from both uh, you know, communications and, and mental health perspective. Yeah, that's certainly a common theme in a lot of our conversations. And what else is uh, PwC doing for the community through this crisis? Well, we, um, you know, part of our value is uh, making a difference. We have five core values, and, and one of them is making a difference. So making a difference for our people, making a difference for our clients, and making a difference for the communities where we live in. And um, we were approached by CPA Ontario to participate in an industry-wide initiative to provide free tax returns for the people who are working on the front lines and their families. So if you think of nurses and orderlies. And um, so we uh, we committed to uh, preparing a 1,000 tax returns free of charge to help with those people, so um, to remove a portion of the stress that they have. So. Obviously, we don't have the capabilities to uh, to be on the front lines and, and to be in hospitals, but we, we can do tax returns. And um, hopefully that removed the portion of the stress that those people have on the front lines. And I thought it was a great uh, initiative from uh, CP on Ontario. And uh, we actually did it using a lot of digital and our digital experience to, uh, to try to be as efficient as possible. And I think that was uh, greatly appreciated. We also, um, the second thing we did uh, in giving back we have a global initiative called New World, New Skills, and it's all about the digital transformation. We have a digital fitness app that we had internally to help our people upskill and learn new things on their digital journey. And we decided to make it available for free to all our clients worldwide. And I'm happy to report that uh, outside of the U.S., Canada had the most uptick on our digital fitness app. So those are two things that we that we did to, uh, to help society and and um, a lot of the non for profit organizations actually took us up on this um, digital journey to upskill themselves so that they can do a better job and, and be more efficient. Oh, that's great. Now, I know that you've been pretty uh, lucky in terms of, I think you've got, what, about 8,800 staff. And so have you had to deal with the virus? And how have you managed that situation? Well, uh, you're right. We have uh, 8,800 people across Canada. And I remember the decision to close the offices, a decision we took uh, mid-March. I think it was uh, March 15th, to be exact. Uh, we ended up shutting all of the 24 offices across the country on March 17th. And um, to be perfectly honest, I was torn. It's easy with the benefit of hindsight that it was the right thing to do. You want to protect your people, but you're also, um, are you contributing to a panicked effect that will throw the Canadian economy in a tailspin? So um, when I heard that our people were afraid to come into the office, well, for me, that was the, the compelling uh, argument like we're not in the business of of fear uh, at PwC and um, our people come first and we didn't want to put them in harm's way. It was a very easy decision to shut down all of the offices uh, on March 17th. It will be a much more complicated decision how we reopen the offices, which ones and at, uh, at which cadence and with how many people. There's a lot of logistics that will go into that. Yeah, I mean, in some ways we're just getting started, aren't we? That's right. And it's going to be a while. Well, that, of course, allows me to conclude our podcast with a pretty standard question we like to ask our our leaders, which is, 
How has this crisis um, impacted you as a leader? What are you learning about yourself uh, through this process? Well, fantastic question. So um, I would say, and again, I'll go back to the comment that there's no textbook on how to manage under COVID-19. I have found uh, Canada's business leaders very accessible, uh, very open to sharing as to what each of us are doing. Personally, I quickly created two cells. So I split the leadership team into two units, one dealing with crisis management and the other one dealing with what I would call business as usual. And about four weeks into the crisis, we started thinking about our return to office and created a third cell led by our chief innovation officer and our, um, of our real estate people and a whole bunch of young, smart, creative people thinking in what does PDBC look like when we come back, both pre-vaccine and post-vaccine. And um, sharing that idea with other CEOs across the country, um, they were saying, that's great. Uh, can Let's get your unit talking to our unit. So I I saw a lot of willingness to share and help each other out uh, across the country, uh, which speaks volumes to uh, our culture and values in Canada. And from a personal wellness, uh, I would say, Goldie, um, I used to travel maybe 12 hours a week. Um, So now I'm I'm running, instead of running two to three times a week, I'm running four to five times a week. I'm eating better and I'm running more. So I'm, I'm down eight pounds. So I am uh, I'm going to come out of this uh, COVID-19 situation, a, a lean, mean fighting machine. What a great spot to end at. Nick, thanks for doing this and uh, stay fit, my friend. Thank you very much for having me. Nicola Marcoux is the CEO of PwC Canada. We've heard a wide range of voices and perspectives on this podcast, but I encourage you to listen to more of our conversations at speakingofbiz.ca, that's biz with a Z, or wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, I'm Goldie Hyder. Thanks for joining us. Be well.